Hey, welcome back. This isn't going to be a rant, okay? I'm not in the middle of watching a game or a game hasn't just concluded. It's going to be uh, more of like rambling. Uh, again, I still have a fucking cold, so I sound like shit. So bear with me. A couple things I want to talk about. I got a piece of paper. Let me make sure I don't remember. Oh, okay, here we go. Coach Mack is out as Florida Gators head coach. What do you guys think? Are you disappointed he's gone? You think it's funny? Well, where are you guys at with this thing? I'm personally disappointed. I'm going to miss the yellow teeth, the swamp donkey jokes, the, the shark jokes. But what I'm seeing on social media is a lot of people are hand-wringing. A lot of FSU fans are like, oh, well, fuck now. Max gone. They're going to bring in some guy. As if, like, it's guaranteed the next head coach they get is going to be the guy. Is going to be, like, a Saban or an Urban or some shit. Okay, look, I would have preferred Mac to stay and continue to watch his fucking middling, terrible offense that last year most people would have told you, look, he's not the guy. There's no must-champ excuses anymore. The offense hasn't shown any signs of improvement, ranked in the hundreds, like every year he was fucking there. But people kept leaning on, well, he, he's won two SEC East titles, two SEC East titles, never mind the fact that the SEC East has basically been a joke the past few years. Finally, this year, they have a legitimate team in Georgia. Okay, which, of course, that legitimate team did what any legitimate team has done versus Mac during his tenure, which is beat the fucking brakes off of him. Those other legitimate teams, of course, being Bama and FSU in his first two years that just absolutely destroyed him. Okay, but back to his replacement. Guys, don't worry about who they get. What FSU needs to worry about is them fucking selves, cleaning their own house, doing their own due diligence on how to get better. Fuck who they who you have hires, whether it's Scott Frost, Mullen, whoever. There's no guarantee they get it right. People keep saying, well, they can't get it wrong three times in a row. They could. The point is, who knows? Wait to see who they hire. Wait to see how they do. Remember, they were, you know, lauded for hiring McElwain. Muschamp was considered a grand slam hire at the time. You don't really know. It's not easy to find the guy. It's, it's, so don't worry about who they get. Worry about FSU's problems. And that's what I'm on to next. Why is FSU where they are now? Just two and five, just complete train wreck. Okay. And can they turn it around? Can Jimbo turn it around? A couple things that really has got FSU where they are. And it's not even so much like strategy or play calling. It's kind of stuff I've you know ranted about before. Number one, and this was actually mentioned um, by ChopChat.com. It's a, kind of a small FSU, smaller FSU website through a fan site. And they were dead on. Because it's the same crap that if you watch... And you read, uh, you know, other other things about the team and the culture. It wasn't surprising to hear what they said. And this is one of the things they said. Accountability. Kind of what I've been ranting about. You have players, whether it's like a McFadden. Excuse me. Uh, or a number of players that take off plays. Like Nooney. You have players that aren't giving 100% effort. Or not even doing their job that well, a.k.a. Uh, McFadden on punt returns, being terrible. Yet, they play, they start, those guys like that, Nooney and McFadden, they start every week. So if you're another player looking at that, what are you thinking? Like, well, okay, well, they're not trying that hard. They're not doing their job. Yet, they play every week. Why the fuck am I going to give 100% effort? Why am I going to give a shit? Okay, and this is true in any business. I'm going to bore you with a very small or a very short uh, story. I used to be an operations supervisor at UPS. I had employees that ranged from about, most of them were between like 18 and like 22 years old. Much like college students at the FSU. Hmm, what do you know? And without fail, if they saw another employee putting less effort but yet not receiving any criticism or or suffering any consequences whether that be uh, that person gets less hours or that person is given like the crap job nobody wants they get to do the same thing 
that the employee working his ass off is doing. And without fail, they would always be like, hey, why does so-and-so, you know, doesn't have to do that or doesn't do that, but I do. I Man, that's bullshit. And that kind of attitude can, can permeate a group, can catch like wildfire so quickly. And it's accountability. Whether it was me or some other supervisor back in the day, you had to, your shitty employees, you had to keep them in check. You had to let them know that if you don't do this, here's the consequences, whatever that might be. Showing up on time, whatever. All right, so enough boring you about, you know, an old job I used to have. But it's the same with FSU. These players that should be like benched at this point, McFadden, I don't care how, about his five-star status. I don't care about his physical attributes. He is not giving enough effort, and he sucks at punt returning. Put his ass on the bench at least for one game to show the rest of the players we're not going to put up with people that don't try hard enough. We're not going to put up with people that are failing at their fucking job over and over again. Who can't catch a punt. <laughs> Who cost the team field, uh, field position over time and time again. So accountability. And that also goes with the coaches. There's coaches that haven't been living up to FSU standards for years now. Dossie, a perfect example. Two wide receivers drafted. He's been the wide receivers coach for 10 years. I don't care if people say, well, he's a good coach. You're not at practices. You don't see this. You don't see that. Fuck that. A blind man should be able to get more than two wide receivers drafted at FSU in a 10-year span. That shows lack of development, does it not? Can't even get picked in the last round? I mean, shit. And there was Kelvin and Rashad. You know? A synchronized swimming coach could get those two drafted. Let's be real. But yet, Dossie's maintained on the staff. He's also not the greatest recruiter in the world, from what I hear. I hear that, uh, or I read from other people that he's not persistent enough on the trail. And if you people fall recruiting, if you know anything about the best recruiters in the country on, on any team, they're persistent like as hell. They, they're borderline harassing recruits, you know? But apparently, that's not Dossie. But yet, he's stayed on the staff. And again, players see that. Other coaches see that. Trickett's another example. I've defended him for a long time, but now the past few years, the sample size is now very large enough Consistent quality offensive line play is an issue. I'm tired of seeing the garbage the past few years. I'm tired of wondering going into every other year, is the offensive line going to be good? There's been some good offensive lines while he's been there. No doubt. You can't win as many games as FSU has with having just dog shit offensive line play. Okay, But it hasn't been consistent enough, especially here lately. Not to mention he's old as fuck. And he's not regarded as some fantastic recruiter himself. Yet, he's stayed on the staff. So, there's other coaches that I'm not going to mention. You can probably guess who they are. Just, the staff's gotten stale. They're not performing up to FSU standards, yet they hold their jobs. They continue to get it paid large sums of money. They're not being held accountable. Okay? And players see that. You think there, some of these players, I know, love Charles Kelly, thinks he's a great guy, but I'm sure there's a lot of them that think, what is this guy doing? Like, the results on the field should say it. But how can they trust the staff when the, the results on the field are saying, we're doing something wrong, we're losing? So the players and coaches aren't being held accountable, and that's fucked the culture entirely out the frame. Okay? <clears throat> And of course, some of the other reasons are, you know, Jimbo has yet to really evolve as an offensive guy. There's been great offenses under Jimbo. Usually, year in and year out, they range from good to great. Just look at the statistics. S&P offense, whatever you want to look at. And now it's fallen off the map. But Jimbo needs to look at himself and make some changes within himself. And I've mentioned this. And that can simply be just the way he thinks about how games should be called. Fourth down math, pace of play, all that. Okay. But those are just a couple reasons shit has gone bad. I think accountability is the number one thing. It's just, I, there's no leaders on the team. 
you know, the, you see lack of effort. No one cares. Well, again, how hard are you going to try if you know there's no consequences for not trying? I mean, that's just the tip of the iceberg. I think, but I think that's the, one of the core reasons for, for this horrible season for the downfall. Okay, what else was I going to talk about? Mm. Oh, here we go. Something else. Um, a lot of people were torn. I see people on social media that are like, Jimbo needs to go. He's not the guy. And other people like me that are willing to give him another chance. And maybe I'm wrong for doing so. But here's the thing. I can't just disregard Jimbo's first seven years. Were they perfect? No. There were some issues, underlying issues, that have now popped up and fucked this season up. But overall, like, he killed it. What was his record before the season started? Like, 78 and 17? 80-something percent winning percentage? Three conference titles, a national title, a college football playoff appearance, 29-game win streak, 29 players drafted in a three-year span for an NFL record. It's like, okay, I get it. There's been some bumps along the way, some bad losses. NC State in 2012, Virginia his first year, UNC last year. Okay. Boston College this year. But I'm willing to give him a chance to make sweeping changes to this staff. Come December, if he makes those those changes among or across the board, he may keep a couple people. But if he makes if he just does one or two coaching changes, that ain't good enough. I'm saying he he makes at least a handful. Then I'd be like, okay, check mark number one. Okay, S number two would be waiting till next season to see if he's changed or if he's evolved or if he's tweaked or if he's adapted. If he's still running or calling plays like slow as shit or if he still doesn't get fourth down math, then at that point I might be like, maybe he's not the guy. Maybe the game in, in just a, a short eight years as head coach has passed him by. But I'm going to give him the, this offseason to make uh, assistant coaching changes and next season to see how he calls a game before I'm like, all right, he's got to go. Because, like I was saying with UF, there's no guarantee his replacement is going to be as good. Complain what you want to complain about, about his first seven years prior to this season. But those were a great seven years, like ever. Any school, any coach. You can stack his first seven years up with anybody. And because of that, I'm going to give him another chance. Now, I'm not going to do what I did when I was much younger during the lost decade, and which started basically 2001, Rick's first year. I waited about five years before I finally was like, you know what? I love you, Bowden, but you got to go. Okay, because you can't wait that long, especially nowadays. Shit can go bad and then and create a long-term just fucking lull. Uh, it just long-term mediocrity. So that's why uh, I'm going to be much less patient, but I'm at least giving him next year. But yeah, the lost decade. It wasn't until, and I'm sure this is like a lot of people, 2006, uh, 0 to 30 versus Wake at home. That was finally the nail in the coffin for me. Like, all right, Bobby, <laughs> it's time to go, buddy. Okay, but that point hasn't happened yet with me and Jimbo. Uh, happened yet with me, with Jimbo. If it has for you, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe it's like, fuck it. But, but let's be real. He's not going anywhere. I mean, that's number one. He's not going anywhere. His contract is insane. The buyout, I don't know what it is, but I'm sure it's ludicrous. Okay. So you might as well not even wring your hands over it. Because it's going to take a hell of a lot more than one abomination of a season for FSU to pony up the box to get rid of him. So I wouldn't even bother just bitching about him wanting to wanting him to, to get out. It's just not going to happen. It would take a, multiple horrible seasons for them to be like, all right, well, we're going to pay you to move the fuck on. So instead, I think he'd be better served to, to wait for the off season and see if he makes those changes and seeing if he changes himself come next season. Uh, I'm willing to wait. At least for those moments. If he doesn't, if he only makes a couple changes in this offseason, or if I see the same crap I'm seeing this year, next year, yeah. Again, I might flip the switch and be like, all right, maybe he should go. Or, man, I would like him to go at the very least. All right, I'm going to cut it off there. Oh, by the way, 
Before I go, in the comment section, I don't think I asked this in the first part. Max replacement, who do you not want to see? Even though I think that you shouldn't worry because there's no guarantee that coach could be. Who do you not want to see? Is it Scott Frost? He seems to be the hot name. Great offense. Seems like a good fit. Or is it someone else you just don't want to see go to Florida? There's only been one hire, whether it's a Miami hire or a Florida hire, that I was like, I actually you did some hand wringing. And that was Urban. You could, you could just tell, like, he, he was that dude. When Florida hired him instead of Charlie Weiss, because I think those were the two top coaching candidates that year. Weiss went to Notre Dame, obviously, and Urban went to Florida. And when he did, I was like, yeah, that's not good. Uh, probably fucked. But beyond that, there's no coach where I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, Golden tired. Uh-oh, even Mark Richt. I don't care that Richt won this year. The guy's proven time and time again he's not a national title level coach. Miami will lose at some point. Okay, I mean, congrats on, you know, beating a retarded version of FSU this year. I mean, you got bragging rights for a year, so that's nice. But please tell me you don't really believe we back. You're not back. You're scraping by UNC. Scraping by Syracuse. Scrape by FSU, who sucks this year. Okay, so no hire, no, no coaching hire except for Urban has really made me be like, oh, no. But I want to hear from you. Who do you not want to see be Florida's head coach? Comment below. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Hit the thumbs up, comment, because I love, I love uh, getting a dialogue going with FSU fans or college football fans. Trolls, you're more than welcome to. All right, I'm out.